Hello and welcome to Chini Vision. This time we're up for some budget arcade action with Panther. Panther was a 1987 game by Mastertronic. Well, my Atari version says 1987 on the inlay. Wikipedia says 1988 and the Spectrum version says 1989. So um, I'm going with 87 as the first time it came out. It was released on Mastertronic's Entertainment USA label. Nothing to do with the appalling TV show with Jonathan King. And it was released on the Atari XL and XE, Commodore 64 and the Spectrum. We're going to start off with the Atari XE version. And this is my 65 XE. And the, the game doesn't boot to a menu, or at least my image doesn't here. It boots straight into the game. So we're off to a flying start. David Whittaker music in the background here. Lovely scrolling as you move along. And the first thing it's drawing to is a bit, it's a bit like Zaxxon, that you're flying in this isometric view. But there's also a bit of choplifter here as well, and I've just been shot down there. Because we've got to rescue people that are at various points in the planet. It always seems to be random. Get them into your ship and fly them to the end of the level. Keep an eye out here, there's a scanner at the bottom of the screen that shows me where baddies are. And may also show me where the humans are. There, oh no, it doesn't show me where the humans are. I'm going to pick up the survivors. You don't know how many are going to run out until they stop running out. That's all of them. Off we go. Love this soundtrack. It's brilliant. It's so good. You can adjust the height, which also adjusts your speed, oddly enough, when you go up and down. So you go slower, lower down, and faster, higher up. And you can go left and right, although you can't go the full way right. You can't move backwards or forwards on the screen. You're always stuck in the one isometric plane. You've got a shadow, the enemies have got a shadow, but I don't think they're missiles, however. Keep an eye out for that which can make it difficult to judge where the missiles are. We're now flying over this abandoned city. The aim is to reach the end of the level, which I've not managed to do as yet, to get to the spaceport. You can see why the game really ramps up the difficulty. over the sea. Apparently there's supposed to be platforms out here that could have humans on them, but I've not seen any as yet. You get five lives at the start. I'm down to two already. And I, you can see that high-res scoreboard at the bottom, which is a nice touch, showing I've got seven people on board. Phoenix manoeuvre complete, so I've got one life left. When we get to the city, apparently you have to fly low down because missiles will be launched at you, but the computer should warn me before I get there. It'll be difficult to see. This game moves fairly quickly. It's used one of that scanner at the bottom, but the enemies are on you so fast. Like saying fly under radar, so oh, oh no, no, this is it. Oh. Right, no, that went horribly wrong there. Game over. Over to the C64. A bit more colourful. We've got the full-on Sid version of the music here. Appear to shoot two bullets rather than one, or two missiles rather than one on this version. And the enemy graphics look a little bit more 3D as well, and they're nicer sprite animation there. More enemies, enemies upon me. Slightly easier on the Commodore 64 to judge where they are, and here are the humans I need to rescue. 
two, three. You've got to park as closely as possible because park land as closely as possible because the enemies will oh, I've had to leave one behind there because the enemies are constantly heading in towards you and if you hang around too long at the um, oh there's more humans there oh I've crashed the human placement is completely different every time you play the game their, their bases will be I've only ever seen them in the desert but they're always at completely random places as far as I can see or perhaps it's not random, perhaps there's many different places they could be. So every time you play the game, it's different. You can't just assume you're going to be landing in one place. You do have to watch out for the enemies being on you before you've picked them all up. So the closer you land, the better. So even though this Commodore 64 version looks better, I, I still kind of verge towards the Atari version, personally. It just it was a little bit more fluid, perhaps. I don't know. It's, there's something about the Atari version that draws me more towards it than the C64 version, which looks far better. I also don't... Even though the Sid version sounds better as well, the music, strangely, I also prefer the Atari version of the tune. Don't ask me why, because... I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Because I know the Sid version is better, but I prefer the Atari version. Craft moves around very responsively. It's one of those games you can keep on playing and improving on and going a little bit further every time. It's just a shame that it's so difficult to see the enemy missiles at times, even on C64 here. If you look at my missiles there, they're quite hard to see against the background. When the enemy ones come along, they're even harder to see. It's easier against the sea here. There's a nice use of pseudo 3D as those flying saucers rotate around. That's really nice. This is going to end badly and very soon. Game over, yeah. See, the C64 version they had copyright 1986 at the end, so now I don't know what to believe. 1989 on the Spectrum, um, as it says on the menu screen there, the game came out. And I wonder if it's going to have any music on it. No, it's a 48k only game. Detailed graphics here, but you lose so much by not having the music. It's such a shame. It's 1989, the 128k speckies are out. Is that a, a humans there? Now, here they come. Oh, they're quite far away. He just got away with that. Mind you of Choplifter. So I've got a survivor there, just one. Pick up the survivors, mind you of Choplifter, really. And as I say, it's a cross between Zaxxon and Choplifter, which is no bad thing, because both games are quite good. Some flying sources there. I don't know if they rotate like the C64 version does. The Spectrum version is just lacking. It suddenly feels rather lacklustre. The lack of music doesn't help, I have to say. It adds so much to the atmosphere of a game, and I know it's a Spectrum 48k, so you're not going to have music, but it, 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 this is actually a problem with a lot of Spectrum 48k games, I find that sometimes you've got games that add really good music that sets the tone of the game, and then you play the Specky 48k version, and it's just farting noises and beeps. But, as, but it's 1989, so why there's not a 128k tune on here is a bit odd. With the fact there's a Spectrum version, you think there'll be a CPC version, especially it being 1989. But no, there's no Amstrad version of the game. They didn't even bother to do a straight specy port. Over the sea and everything's yellow in this version, so no, no blue sea. They probably could have had a blue sea, actually, because you wouldn't have necessarily had a colour clash. You could have just changed it as you went over it. But, to be honest, this Spectrum version feels like a game that Mastertronic have decided to pay someone to convert from the C64 and Atari to get some sales on the Spectrum.
It just feels like one of those games that's been given to a program and they've been given two weeks to knock this out. And we're onto the city now, so I've got to fly low down and avoid these missiles. Oh, no. No. Path is one of those games that's been overlooked over the years because perhaps it has a lackluster spectrum version. There's no CPC conversion, no versions for other formats. It's just for the C64, the Atari, and the Spectrum. I personally prefer the Atari 8-bit version, even though it's not nearly as attractive as the Commodore 64 version. It's just got a nice fluidity about it. It plays well. The C64 version looks really nice. It plays well. It's, it's a matter of personal preference. If you go for the Atari version, or the C64 version. You're going to have enormous fun whichever of those versions of the game you play. The Spectrum version, it's lackluster. It feels like a game that someone's been told to convert in two weeks for a flat fee. No 1 to 8K music. It's all a bit mediocre. To be honest, to be honest, it's not really a game worth looking at. But on the C64 and the Atari 8-bit, take your pick between those two. Panther is a class budget game. It plays really well. Perhaps it had been a full price game, I wouldn't be praising it as much, but for $2.99 you really could not argue.